Hi students, welcome to Nellie Nadar Vice YouTube channel. Students, in this video you are going to learn about potentiometer. So what is potentiometer? The potentiometer is a device. It is used to measure accurate measurement of potential differences, current and resistances. Students, in this picture the apparatus used for the potentiometer experiment is given. This is a potentiometer. This is a rheostat. Here, this is a high resistance box. Here, uh, this potentiometer is used to compare the electromotive force of the two cells. One is Leclanche cell and uh, another one is Daniel cell. So, these are the two cells. This is a key. This is a DPTT switch, double pole, double throw switch. This is a battery. Okay, so these are the apparatus going to use for the potential meter experiment. Students, it consists of 10 meter long uniform wire of manganese. See that potential meter box, it consists of 10 meter long manganese wire. Okay. So, it starts from here, it is end here, it has a 10 meter long. This 10 meter long potentiometer magnet wire or constant time wire stretched in parallel rows each of 1 meter length. Okay, each part having 1 meter length, it is also stretched on the wooden board. The two free ends C and D are brought to the same side and fixed to copper strips with binding screw. Here this is end C and D. Here it is brought to the same side and it is also fixed with binding screw. See that it is also fixed at the same end with using binding screw. A meter scale is fixed parallel to the wire and a jockey is provided for making contact. Okay. So, in this circuit diagram, here this is a end C and D. Okay. So, this is a manganese wire. The length of the manganese wire is noted by letter L. Here there is a jockey. That jockey is provided for making contact with the manganese wire. Students, this is a circuit diagram for the potentiometer. Here, the principle of the potentiometer is illustrated in figure. This is a circuit diagram to explain the principle of the potentiometer. A steady current is maintained across the wire CD by a battery. A steady current is maintained across the wire CD by a battery. The battery key and the potentiometer wire are connected in series form the primary circuit. Okay, in this circuit, the battery key and the potentiometer wire are connected in series. Here, it is form the primary circuit. Next, the positive terminal of the battery. We are taking the electromotive force of the battery is psi. Here the positive terminal of the battery of the primary cell of a electromotive force psi is connected to the point C. And a negative terminal is connected to the jockey through one galvanometer and a higher resistance. This is from secondary circuit. Okay. So here in potentiometer, it consists of primary circuit and secondary circuit. That is also explained. Let the contact be made at any point J on the wire by the jockey. If the potential difference across CJ is equal to the electromotive force of the cell psi, then no current will flow through the galvanometer and it will be so zero deflection. Students, listen me. When the J is 
contact on the manganese wire if the potential difference across cj is equal to the electromotive force the potential difference across through the cj is equal to electromotive force of the cell then no current will flow through the galvanometer and it will be show the zero deflection okay so you need to understand in a galvanometer it is show the deflection zero means the circuit is balanced if the circuit is balanced means there is experience a potential difference on the manganese wire is equal to electromotive force of the cell the balancing length l we note the value is cj is a balancing length l so the potential difference across cj is equal to i into r into l okay so here the i is a current flowing through the wire r is the resistance per unit length so only it is multiplied with the l okay so r is a resistance per unit length so we are calculate the total resistance means here the resistance per unit length is multiplied within the cj that is l so the potential difference cj is equal to i into r into l since the current i and the resistance are constant we know the current is passing is supplied by the battery so that is a known values and the r is the resistance of the manganese wire the ma that is also we know so since i and r are the constant we can write that electromotive force of the cell psi is directly proportional to the l because psi is equal to i into r into l the potential difference across the cj is equal to electromotive force of the cell because the circuit is balanced already we know that in a wisdom bridge okay so here if the circuit is balanced means what is that the balancing length is equal to electromotive force of the cell so we can write the psi is equal to i into r into l here the i and r are the constant values so in next step we can write i uh, psi is e psi is equal to constant into l so it it can be written as psi is directly proportional to the l psi is directly proportional to the l okay students so the electromotive force of the cell is directly proportional to the balancing length next comparison of electromotive force of two cells with a potentiometer to compare the electromotive force of the two cell the circuit connection is shown in the figure okay so the cd is a potentiometer in this cd we are connected to one battery and the key in series connection this is a primary circuit okay so this is a potentiometer wire in this potentiometer wire the battery key and the rheostat are connected in series this is a primary circuit next the end of c of the wire is connected to the terminal m of a dp dt dp dt means double pole double throw switch okay so the terminal uh, the end of the c of the wire is connected to the terminal m of a dp dt switch and the other terminal n is connected to a jockey is connected to the jockey is connected to a jockey through galvanometer and high resistance through galvanometer and high resistance here the other end of the dp to switch n is connected to the jockey through one galvanometer and high resistance here the cells whose electromotive force psi1 and psi2 to be compared are connected to the terminal m1 n1 of the dp to switch and m2 n2 of the dp to switch so the positive that means here we consider which electromotive force of the cells are going to be compared it is also connected between the m1 and m1 n1 and m2 n2 
students so we calculated the principle of the potentiometer what is the principle of the potentiometer the electromotive force of the cell psi is directly proportional to the valency line so by using that concept now i am going to teach comparison of electromotive force of two cell with a potentiometer to compare the electromotive force of two cells the circuit connection is shown in the figure in this the cd is a potential meter wire the cd is a potential meter wire that potential meter wire is connected with one battery key and rheostat in series connection this is a primary circuit then the end of the c of the magnet wire is connected to the terminal m of the dpdt that is double pole double through okay so the end of c of the wire is connected to the m of the dpdt switch and the other terminal n is connected to a jockey through a galvanometer and a high resistance okay students like in dpdt switch there is also having the point m1 n1 m2 n2 whose electromotive force of the cell to be compared that cells are connected between the m1 n1 and m2 n2 here the cells whose electromotive force psi1 and psi2 to be compared are connected to the terminals m1 n1 and m2 n2 of the dpdt switch so this is a one cell it has electromotive force is psi1 is connected to the terminal m1 and n1 n1 the another cell it has electromotive force that is psi2 it is connected between the m2 n2 so the positive terminal of the battery psi1 and psi2 should be connected to the same end c okay the positive terminal of the first cell psi1 the positive terminal of the second cell of the electromotive force psi2 is connected to the point c the dpdt switch is pressed towards m1 n1 so that the cell psi1 is connected to the circuit is connected to the secondary circuit so and the balancing length l1 is found by adjusting the jockey for the zero deflection so when the jockey moves on the magnet wire at a particular point in a galvanometer it is so the deflection is zero by using that the balancing length for the electromotive force of the first cell is calculated then the second cell psi2 is included in the circuit and the balancing length l2 is determined so now the dpdt switch is fixed with m1 n2 terminal now the second cells are connected to the secondary circuit by using that the balancing length is calculated the balancing length for the electromotive force of the second cell is calculated let r be the resistance per unit length of the potentiometer wire and i be the current flowing through it of the wire we have the electromotive force of the first cell psi1 is equal to i into r into l1 l1 is the balancing length so from the balancing length we are going to calculate the electromotive force of the first cell the electromotive force of the first cell that is psi1 is equal to current into resistance per unit length into balancing length l1 so same as we can calculate the electromotive force of the second cell that is psi2 is equal to i into r into l2 here the current is a constant resistance is constant only there is a changes in a balancing length so by dividing that equations we can get the psi1 divided by psi2 is equal to i r l1 divided by i r l2 here the i r i r same values it can be neglected so we get psi1 divided by psi2 is equal to l1 divided by l2 by including the rheostat 
in the primary circuit the experiment can be repeated several times by changing the current flow through it and the value of the l1 and l2 calculated by using that values the electromotive force of the two cells compared by using the formula of psi1 divided by psi2 is equal to l1 divided by l2 students this is also important five more questions students okay comparison of electromotive force of the two cell by using potentiometer students by including a rheostat or h in the primary circuit the experiment can be repeated several times by changing the current flow through it already i told to you so here we connected one rheostat in the primary circuit here that rheostat is used to change the resistance the rheostat is used to change the resistance so when we are change the resistance the current flowing through the circuit is changes so by using that we can measure the electromotive force of the cell for the different values of the current and the electromotive force of the two cells are compared by using this experiment students next topic measurement of internal resistance of a cell by potentiometer students previously we discussed the comparison of electromotive force of two cells by using potentiometer now i am going to teach measurement of internal resistance of a cell by potentiometer to measure the internal resistance of a cell the circuit connection is shown in the figure the end of the potentiometer wire c is connected to positive terminal of the battery and the negative terminal of the battery is connected to the end c through the key k1 this is from the primary circuit okay one battery and one key is connected to the potentiometer wire in series connection it is from the primary circuit next the positive terminal of the cell psi whose internal resistance is to be determined okay whose internal resistance of the cell to be measured that is connected in the secondary circuit now the positive terminal of the cell is connected to the point c of the manganin wire the negative terminal of the cell is connected to the jockey through one galvanometer and higher resistance see there okay so now we are going to calculate the internal resistance of the cell is connected in the secondary circuit a resistance box it has a value c r and a key k2 are connected across the cell psi okay to calculate the internal resistance of the cell we take one external resistance it has a value c r and one key are connected across the cell it is connected across the cell across means it is connected parallel to the cell it is connected parallel to the cell the balance in length j is obtained and the balance in length cj is equal to l1 is measured since the cell is open circuit now the key is not open the key k2 is not open the jockey is placed on the manganin wire and it is adjust at a particular position in the galvanometer it is to show the deflection zero we can calculate the values of the cj that is a balance in length for the electromotive force of the cell so at first as a open circuit the key is not connected as a open circuit here we calculate the balance in length cj that is equal to l1 so from this we can write the electromotive force of the cell psi is directly proportional to the l1 next a suitable resistance that is we connect the resistance box no by using this resistance box a suitable resistance 10 ohm is included now the key is closed there in this external resistance box we make the value 10 ohm is connected a suitable resistance 10 ohm is included in the resistance box and key k2 is closed 
and the key K2 is closed. Let R be the internal resistance of the cell, the current passing through the cell and the resistance R is given by I is equal to total electromotive force psi divided by total resistance that is R plus R. Capital R means that is a external resistance of the circuit, small letter R means that is a internal resistance of the cell. So, the total resistance is calculated by using R plus R. So, the potential difference across R, it can be calculated by using the Ohm's law, that is V is equal to current into resistance. Here, the current value is psi divided by R plus R, the resistance is the external resistance. So, we can write psi R divided by R plus R. When this potential difference is balanced on the potentiometer wire, let L2 be the balancing length. So, we can write the potential difference psi r divided by r plus r is directly proportional to the L2. When the key is closed, we calculated that uh, balancing length L2, that balancing length L2 is also equal to the electromotive force. So, we can write psi r divided by r plus r is directly proportional to the L2. So, from this equation, we can write the psi is directly proportional to the L1, the psi r divided by R plus R is directly proportional to the L2. We can compare this equation, we get psi is directly proportional to the L1 divided by psi R divided by R plus R is directly proportional to the L2. In next step, it can be written as here the psi, it has the same values, so we can neglect that psi psi cancelled. So, it is taken as inverse form that is R plus R divided by R is equal to L1 divided by L2, right side L1 divided by L2, left side it is changed to R plus R divided by R, psi psi cancelled, so R plus R divided by R is equal to L1 divided by L2. In this we can write, it is split into capital R divided by capital R plus small letter R divided by R is equal to L1 divided by L2, so R R cancelled, so 1 plus R plus R is equal to L1 divided by L2. From this, we need to calculate the values of the internal resistance. The internal resistance is not a letter small letter r. So, the small letter r is equal to L1 divided by L2. This is plus 1, it will become as minus 1 e into r, capital letter r. So, the small letter r is equal to capital letter r into L1 minus L2. L1 divided by L2 minus 1. L1 divided by L2 minus 1. So, the internal resistance R is equal to R into, we can take the LCM for this, that is L1 minus L2 divided by L2. L1 minus L2 divided by L2. Substituting the value of the R, that is the external resistance, L1 and L2, these are the balancing length. Okay. So, substituting the values of R, L1 and L2, the internal resistance of the cell is determined. The experiment can be repeated for different values of R. It is found that the internal resistance of the cell is not constant. Okay, for various value of the external resistance, we can calculate the balance length L1 and L2, and it is substituted in this equation. We can find the internal resistance of the cell. Here, the internal resistance of the cell is not constant for various values of the external resistance. Thank you, students.